Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to an ESPN NFL 2K5 franchise dynasty with the Philadelphia Eagles. We are sitting at 6-1 for the year, a great start to the dynasty, although we did lose Donovan McNabb, our star quarterback, to an ACL tear in our last game. So before we get off on our game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to the channel. Only about 14% of you who watch these videos are subscribed or on the road to 500. I really appreciate you being here and throwing us your like, your comment, and your subscription. Now we've got those Pittsburgh Steelers, a great team, honestly, for our backup Jeff Blake to play against. We way outweigh them on the stat column. Our defense should hopefully have a great time against them. And without further ado, let's get into this one. Eagles versus Steelers. We got a dreary, poory sort of a day here in Pittsburgh, Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The rain is coming down with no signs of stopping, but the crowd is out and they are ready to go for this matchup between cross-state and cross-conference rivals. The Pittsburgh Steelers currently sitting at 2-5 and five, are hoping to get back into the winning ways. And the Philadelphia Eagles, as we mentioned, 6-1, and one, getting the ball first here in Heinz Field. Perry only gets one yard on that first run. Jeff Blake, our backup, steps up and completes that pass to Todd Pinkston for 9 18 yards, a great first completion for Todd Pinkston. First and 10 now, Perry taking that toss to the right side for three yards, and immediately Pittsburgh's best defensive player, James Ferrier, arguably one of their best defensive players, goes down, carted off, will not return for the rest of the day. A terrible blow for the Pittsburgh Steelers early on in this game. After the seven yard reception from Owens, Richie gets the call up the middle, five yard gain, a first down for the Philadelphia Eagles, and Bruce Perry is right back where he started up, spinning off of that tackle and getting 13 yards and a fresh first down on his second run of the day and we'll take a look at that one he spins out of one tackle a nifty little move from the Oregon Duck after that Creed Vault finally gets him down first and 10 from the Pittsburgh 27 the Eagles moving quickly into Steelers territory the next pass over the middle from Blake to Pinkston is incomplete the rain definitely taking some effect right there Richie gets the call up the middle Hampton gets a quick tackle but he takes him down by the face mask that is an intentional face mask call on the Pittsburgh Steelers that's going to give the Eagles a huge position on the field 13 yards to go until the end zone and Blake wants all 13 of them right there he tosses one up to Terrell Owens who mosses his defender there would be a pass interference called on the play, but it would be declined. Roethlisberger takes over now for the Steelers on their own 24. After the incomplete pass to Burris, he finds Lee Mays for 18 yards. Dawkins on the stop. Pittsburgh gets a first down on their own 42. Roethlisberger finds another receiver on this one, but he fumbles it. Jerain Tooman fumbles the pass. It is recovered by Jammer, but Pittsburgh doesn't like the play. They would challenge that the ball was dropped before it was complete, the receiver not having enough time for possession. And let's take another look at this one right here. Roethlisberger feeling the pressure coming onto him. Tooman catches it, gets hit almost immediately, and the refs agree upon a second look that the call would be overturned. Pittsburgh with a successful challenge. This one is incomplete, second and 10 now. Roethlisberger rolling out to his left, throws it to his left side, finding Plastico Burris reaching over his defender to catch that one, a gain of 12 yards on the play. On the next one, Roethlisberger rolls left again, throws it over the top. This one is stepped into and intercepted by Michael Lewis, a great pick by the strong safety Michael Lewis coming all the way over to the left side of the field from where he usually sits on the right. You can see here he steps in front of Heinz Ward before he can get that streaking pass right into his hands and the Eagles will take back over with a lead of 7 to nothing, hoping to extend it a little farther and John Ritchie is rumbling and tumbling all the way up the middle for 17 yards giving the Philadelphia Eagles a fresh first down. Perry gets stopped that time very quickly by McCutcheon only gets two yards on that run. Blake dropping back to pass this time. It is in and out of the hands of Billy McMullen, incomplete. Third and eight now, a play action pass from Blake going over the middle into the hands of Todd Pinkston, complete for 15 yards. The first down for the Eagles, Perry gets the call again, up the middle for four yards, second and six. John Ritchie will get the call this time, bounces off of the big booty of John Runyon and only gets one yard on the play. Third and five, Blake rolling to his right, rolls away from pressure, shovel passes it to Pinkston, who only gets a couple of yards. The Steelers will get their possession back on the punt from the Eagles. First and 10 from the 20, Roethlisberger finds Hyde Ward this time, 13 yards on the game. And Jeremiah Trotter there to stop him. First and 10 from the Pittsburgh 33. Jerome the Bus Bettis finally gets his first carry. He rumbles up the right side for three yards. Michael Lewis is getting credited for the stop. He gets the ball again, sheds Michael Lewis that time, and Dawkins is there for the stop. The end of the first quarter is here. The Eels are on the board. It is a 7 0 game here in rainy Pittsburgh, 
Pennsylvania started the second quarter, a third down for the Steelers. Roethlisberger finds Burris on the quick pass for 14 yards. Shepard and Dawkins combined for the tackle. First and 10, Roethlisberger complete again to Heinz Ward. There would be a penalty, a defensive pass interference by Trotter. That one would be declined as the Steelers got the first down. And then Jeremiah Trotter breaks through for a big sack, a loss of seven yards. Second and 17 for the Steelers. Roethlisberger tries to drop it off to Jerome Bettis on the screen pass. He gets tackled from behind by Kalu, a five-yard gain overall on the play. Roethlisberger on the third and 12. I don't know what he was trying to do with that one, but it is incomplete to Heinz Ward, and Bruce Perry is back off to the races again. This time gets far to the right side for three yards. The Eagles get a second and seven now. Jeff Blake, our good backup, gets, a, he, honestly, he tossed that up to three Steelers defenders, and Terrell Owens came down with it, a gain of 16, another first down for the Eagles, and they do it again. Blake to Owens, you're going to be hearing that one a bunch today. 16-yard gain on the play, another first down for the Eagles. Perry gets a run to the right side. Haggins makes sure he only gets a yard out of it. Second and nine, again, a short run up the middle by John Ritchie, Joey Porter there to take care of things. But of course, the Jeff Blake to Terrell Owens connection is strong. Troy Palomalu couldn't get his height in front of that ball. Troy Palomalu height may be a little bit of an oxymoron, and we get a first down for the Eagles way down the field from the Pittsburgh 27. After the deflected pass by Joey Porter, he gets sacked by Haggins for a loss of five. Haggins, the backup coming in, is doing a great job of replacing what they lost with Ferrier. Third and 15, Blake looking around, tosses it deep up the middle to Freddie Mitchell, who bounces it off of his hands incomplete. Philly would also get slapped with an ineligible receiver downfield. For some reason, it was declined, and we would get a 49-yard field goal by David Akers. That one is good, and it is 10 to nothing. The Eagles with the lead here into the second quarter. The Steelers take back over from their own 26. Roethlisberger misses Heinz Ward again on the left side, and Bettis gets stopped for a loss of one by Nate Wayne. Third and 11 already. Roethlisberger's pass is deflected in the air by Brian Dawkins and taken away on the deflection by Lido Shepard. And not only does he have the interception, he's got the speed to match. He sends Ben Roethlisberger to the other side of the field. That guy should probably buy a helmet or something. And Lido Shepard has a giant takeaway for the Philadelphia Eagles and just an absolutely backbreaking turnover for the Pittsburgh Steelers as the Eagles have wonderful field position coming off of that Lido Shepard interception taking over at the Pittsburgh 16. From that first down, Bruce Perry gets a little bit of room in front of him, gets four yards out of the rush. Second and six coming up. And Jeff Blake drops back, floats one up to Todd Pinkston, and it is in his hands for the touchdown. The Eagles put even more space between them and their Pennsylvania rival, up 17 to nothing here in just the first half, and these Eagles are cruising to put a bruising on these Pittsburgh Steelers. First and 10 now for the Steelers again. Bettis gets up the left side for just two yards. Kirsten Simono in there for the stop. Second and eight, Roethlisberger passes incomplete to Heinz Ward. It was deflected by one of our cornerbacks, and Brian Dawkins just put the absolute hurt on Heinz Ward there. And on the third down, Roethlisberger is able to find Heinz Ward for a gain of 22 yards. Pittsburgh will move the chains. First and 10 from the Philadelphia 46. Bettis draws to the left side, gets five yards. Dawkins and Wayne there for the stop. Timeout from Pittsburgh now that we're inside of the two-minute warning. Second and five, Roethlisberger pass up to Burris, bounces off of his shoulders, incomplete. Third and five, Roethlisberger throws another pass incomplete to, I think it was to Jerome Bettis. That one would get called for an illegal touching of a forward pass by one of the Pittsburgh linemen. And then for some reason, we would decline that one. It'd be a fourth and five. Maybe we thought that they were going to punt it. They went for it. Roethlisberger throws incomplete to Lee Mays, and that's going to take us into halftime. We hold the Steelers scoreless throughout the first half. We are up 17 to nothing here at Heinz Field. And taking a look at the tail of the stats, we're passing well, we're running well, we're doing a good job on defense, and overall, we are holding this Pittsburgh team to the marginal little eh, kind of team that they are. So we'll see if this good lead holds and or stretches into the second half. And well, folks, this is how you do it. Roethlisberger throws the ball directly to Lido Shepard. He must have thought that Lido was his receiver for some reason. And Lido gets his second interception of the day. You can see it right here. That is a yes, sir. I will take that back into the end zone. And y'all can have another chance at offense. The Eagles are now up 24 to nothing. And we can call this one a certified blowout. Roethlisberger trying to get everything back in one pass. It is deflected by Michael Lewis. Incomplete. Lucky that that wasn't another interception right away. Jerome the bus gets up the middle for four yards. Michael Lewis 
Lewis again in there on the play. The third and six, Roethlisberger almost gets sacked by Javon Kurse, manages to find Ward on the left side, gets 10 yards and a first down. Now with the first and 10, Roethlisberger throws the ball to Turf, his favorite receiver so far today. Second and 10, almost gets sacked and again finds Heinz Ward right at the last second. Jammers there for the stop, but a 10-yard gain and another first down for the Steelers. They're starting to put something together here, but Bettis gets up the middle for three yards. I almost called him Bettis. Trotter and Simono gets the stop. Second and seven, Roethlisberger cannot find the bus that time. Passes incomplete. Third and seven, Roethlisberger to keep the magic alive. Plexico Burris loses his defender that time and gets out of bounds for a gain of 23 yards. And on the very next play, the same formula. Plexico Burris loses Quentin Jammer there, gets into the end zone for a gain of 24 yards. And just like that, Pittsburgh is on the board. It is now a 24 to seven gain. The Eagles are still up. After that two yard run from Bruce Perry, Blake gets incomplete to Freddie Mitchell, had it in his hands, but dropped it on the contact from the safety. And on the third down, what do you know? Blake to Owens, a 21 yard game. Palomalu is in there on the stop, but couldn't get the stop of the pass going into Tio's hands. Perry gets the toss to the right side. He's only gonna get one yard out of this one. Townsend there for the quick stop. Second down, dropping back, throwing to the left side to our Max Chad, Chad Lewis. The tight end rumbles forward for 12 yards and the first down. We have a first and 10 from the Pittsburgh 44. And now we have some good display of offense from Jeff Blake here. He spins one over to Bruce Perry who gets out of the tackle and downfield for a big gain of 18 yards. First and 10 from the Pittsburgh 26. Now to the left side, just out of the outstretched hands of a Pittsburgh defender into T.O.'s hands, another 17 yard gain. And just like clockwork, Jeff Blake, Todd Pinkston meet the end zone. He's in there for another nine yards and a touchdown. The Eagles get right back on the board with a second touchdown for Todd Pinkston. We'll see this again. This pass was perfect from Jeff Blake into the hands of Todd Pinkston. A little shake and bake, a little dive into the end zone, and we are back up a whole bunch here in Pittsburgh. Bettis gets up the middle for three yards. Dawkins in on the stop. He gets the call again and a big loss. The Eagles were in the backfield right when the ball was stopped. Nate Wayne in there for the loss of two. And then Roethlisberger throws a pass that is deflected by Brian Dawkins. Once again, almost taken away. And the Eagles take back over. And this is not what you want to see. Jeff Blake floats one up to Todd Pinkston, who doesn't catch it. It bounces out of his hands. And Todd Pinkston would be injured on the play. And y'all, this is the season of torn knee ligaments. Todd Pinkston would also suffer a torn ACL, but hold on, we still have Bruce Perry whose knees are together for now, and he uses them to get a big run to the left side for 30 yards, a huge run from the rookie Bruce Perry, getting himself into the longest run of his day so far. Richie promptly gets up the middle for no gain, and then Jeff Blake throws one to the right side and bounces it off of the shoulder pad of Bruce Perry, so we're immediately at a third and 10 from the post big run from Bruce Perry. And on our little floater up to the left side, Greg Lewis can't hold on to it. That brings up a 40 yard field goal from David Akers. The kick is up and good. And the Eagles extend their lead a little bit further. 34 to seven is now the score, but at what cost as we have now lost our second best receiver for the rest of the year. Jerome Bettis makes someone pay on the truck stick, gets five yards on that left side run. And on the second and five, Roethlisberger again is throwing a lot of passes that are in danger of getting intercepted and that is going to take us to the end of the third quarter the eagles are in complete control 34 to 7 we will see if the steelers have any more life left in them here in the fourth quarter on that first pass from roethlisberger our defense bails them out we get a defensive pass interference from lito shepherd there on the defense of the pass and a first down for the steelers bettis immediately runs to the left side dawkins gets him on the stop we get a second and seven and then the bus finally breaks out. Rumbling forward, gets out of a tackle, makes it 33 yards before getting tackled by Nate Wayne. Out of bounds, it's a first and 10 from the Philadelphia 20. Roethlisberger throws it up to somebody, he floats it on up, Ina in there for the deflection, and that is an incomplete pass. Second and 10, Deuce Staley, the backup in for that big run on the post side of that big run from Jerome Bettis, only gets one yard up the middle from Simono. Roethlisberger finds the pass back to Bettis, back in, gets a loss of three yards on that screen pass, giving the Steelers a 40-yard field goal. Jeff Reed puts it up there, and it is good. They are now getting a little bit closer, but only a little bit. The Eagles are still up 24 points, 34 to 10. That first pass to Freddie Mitchell from Jeff Blake is complete this time, 14 yards on the play, first and 10 for the Eagles. Bruce Perry trying to make magic happen again. Gets six yards on the tackle from Palomalu, a good gain, second and four. Richie gets up the middle for just one yard. Joey Porter there for the stop. And on the third and three, Jeff Blake looks around, finds Bruce Perry on the flat, who spins out of a tackle and then gets taken down 
and they're going to get the first down based on the call with the chains, but Pittsburgh decided that they did not like the call based on where the referee spotted the ball, so they would go ahead and challenge that one, Bill Cowher getting his coach hat on, and you can see there that Bruce Perry was tackled just before that first down line. The, field the challenge would be successful, the ruling on the field would be overturned, and the Steelers would get the ball back with another chance to put the ball in the end zone and make this thing a little bit closer. But that's not how you start it. First and 10 is incomplete, but the second and 10 is complete to Heinz Ward. 14 yards on the play. First and 10 from the Pittsburgh 40. Roethlisberger throws it over the middle. It looked like good defense, but the referees disagree. Another defensive pass interference call on Jeremiah Trotter. A first down for the Steelers. On that next play, deep to Heinz Ward. That one's incomplete at, over the outstretched hands of everybody. And once again, on the second and 10, he finds Heinz Ward for another 11 yards. Lito Shepard just a step behind Heinz Ward on a lot of these plays. First and 10, another incomplete pass. Bringing up second and 10, where second and 10 seemed to be their magic number for this final drive. He finds Pucks Coburis that time, not shooting himself in the proverbial leg, getting a 13-yard gain. And that time, that pass is deflected by Tyrone Williams. And then you know, second and 10, something big's gonna happen. Roethlisberger floats it over the middle. Tuman makes up for that fumble, but wasn't really a fumble. Gets a 20-yard gain. Jeremiah Trotter saving the touchdown, but that just allows Antoine Randall L to get his first and only reception of the day. And in the last effort, the Pittsburgh Steelers put up an onside kick. It is recovered by Bartram, and the Eagles would be able to run it out and kneel it out in the remainder of the time that we have here in the fourth quarter. And that is going to bring us to the end of this one. Jeff Blake does a great job of taking over for the injured Donovan McNabb and leads the Philadelphia Eagles to a great away victory over the Pittsburgh Steelers. Our final score from Heinz Field is 34 to 17. Thanks for coming out, ladies and gentlemen. We will see you on the next game. And we're gonna check out our final stats, our team stats, and the league leaders in stats, as well as our trade updates through the season for the rest of this episode. Now, taking a look at our total stats from the game, the Steelers actually did end up outgaining us. We definitely took our feet off of the pedal, especially after Shepard put in that pick six, but let's take a look at our notable stats for the day. Jeff Blake, once again, had a very proficient day behind center, going 16 for 24, 217 yards, three touchdowns, and no interceptions, which is something you love to see. Bruce Perry did a great job behind center as our running back, 15 total attempts, 72 total yards with that long run of 30 yards. John Ritchie came in and did his thing as well, nine attempts for 30 yards. T.O., always reliable, always our cheat code, seven receptions, 113 yards, did haul in one touchdown. But the heartbreaking thing is that we are now without the services of Todd Pinkston for the rest of the year, who was a very reliable second receiver who had five receptions, 57 yards, two touchdowns. Lito Shepard, definitely the MVP of our defensive efforts today, five total tackles, two total interceptions, one of which he brought all the way back to the house for a touchdown. And Jeremiah Trotter was just holding it down in the middle. He had six total tackles. He had one total sack. And he was an absolute monster the entire day sitting in that inside linebacker spot. So we got a real test coming at us next week and the Dallas Cowboys. They are a good team. They're a solid defensive team. And as you can see here, we are confirming the worst that Todd Pinkston is now on the injury report for four whole months. Not as long as McNabb is planning to be out for with that ACL tear. Who knows what the science is behind that. But let's take a look at our stats through the year. McNabb was having a great season. He was throwing a lot of interceptions, but he had almost 1,700 yards, 11 total touchdowns. Jeff Blake, however, has come in and done a really good job. Once again, Bruce Perry, who would have thought that our rookie Bruce Perry rated low 50s overall would have the most rushing yards on this team? Well, I did because Westbrook and Buckhalter get hurt all the time, but we do get Westbrook back in the next game. So we will look forward to having the services of Brian Westbrook again and Corral Buckhalter shortly after. You can see there T.O. is having a great year, 812 total yards. That might be a league-leading number. We'll find out very soon. Todd Pinkston was also having a great season, getting really, really close to that top five in total reception yards, and both of them were hauling in their fair share of touchdowns. Freddie Mitchell will definitely have to step up in the second half of the season. As you can see here, Quentin Jammer is our leading tackler, and that is 99% because he was on a different team when the year started 
and that means he was getting those simulated numbers for tackles. Uh, you can see our sack leaders there, Javon Kurse, Ndukwe, Kalu, Jeremiah Trotter. We're hoping we get more work out of that line, but our defensive backs are doing great. Lito Shepard, Michael Lewis, Brian Dawkins, Quentin Jammer. David Akers is perfect from the field goal line. Dirk Johnson is our punter. You can see he's done some punts. And our special teams, you know, not a ton to sneeze at. We haven't really needed to rely on special teams. Bruce Perry is taking less kickoff returns now that he's getting more time under center. Once we have Brian Westbrook back into the fold, I think Bruce Perry is going to go back into that kickoff and punt return sort of stature. And looking at our top quarterbacks for the year so far, Peyton Manning for the Indianapolis Colts leading the way for quarterbacks so far and just doing it not throwing the ball away very much He's got a ton of touchdowns so far Steven Davis is the top running back so far from the Carolina Panthers followed closely by Corey Dillon and Priest Holmes You can see he's also been in the end zone nine total times only matched by Steven Alexander And as you can see T.O. is the second highest in reception yards because Marvin Harrison is having a damn good season Probably part of the reason why Peyton Manning is having such a damn good season. He is by far leading the league in touchdowns and receiving yards. So far, we can see if we can catch up to him throughout the second half of this year. And as you can see, Nick Barnett is leading the league in total tackles so far this year. And it, it, I mean, we're not going to have anyone on those lists. You saw that Quentin Jammer was at his 30s as our most tackles in total. So you can see Julian Peterson, Warren Sapp as the sack leaders with nine and a half so far. And we are up there in our passes to Defended. You can see those three Philadelphia Eagles in the top three, Michael Lewis, Brian Dawkins, and Lito Shepard, although we are not the league leader in interception, that is for Champ Bailey. You can see that we are the one team that has a kicker that hasn't missed so far in this season in David Akers, Ryan Lindell, not too far behind him, and technically Tom Ruin is the best punter by net average. I like measuring by net average. And if we look at special teams, Ontario Smith has the most kick return yards, and Champ Bailey has the most punt return yards although kick return yards not necessarily the best thing that means that you might be getting scored on a lot and without further ado let's go ahead and look at the trades for the year the 49ers got defensive tackle Daryl Russell for the services of the defensive end Brian Whiting that is an exchange of a couple of high 70s guys the Bengals were movers this year they got guard Kerry Jenkins defensive end Lang and defensive end Douglas so they got big upgrades on their defensive line but you can see down there that they traded Carson Palmer to the Jacksonville Jaguars, probably the biggest trade of the season so far. The Browns were busy as well. They got a cornerback and they got a tackle from the Bengals and the Pittsburgh Steelers, respectfully. Not a huge movement. All those players are in the high 70s. And once again, Michael Strahan, the Bucks also making a lot of moves. Michael Strahan got sent to the Bucks for Simeon Race. That's a trade of a couple guys in their 90s. You also have some movement of a defensive end and getting Mike McKenzie over there from the Green Bay Packers to bolster up that defense. They did trade away a pretty good running back and once again, another defensive tackle. The Arizona Cardinals got way better at tackle by giving up their cornerback Dwayne Starks and they also acquired the linebacker Kendrell Bell for their defensive end, Burt Barry. You can see there the Chargers only got some draft picks for Quinton Jammer because that's the rules. We can only trade for draft picks another way around. You can see what the Chiefs did here, getting Brandon Whiting for their defensive line and an upgrade at defensive tackle. We already discussed that trade for Flozell Adams. The Falcons got a little bit better at cornerback for the services of a defensive tackle. You can see that move for Strahan is the only one that the Giants made. Will Smith for Sean Rogers. That's actually a pretty big one. Both of those are very talented defensive linemen. You can see that final move from the Washington football team. And the Steelers made a lot of moves as well, giving up a bunch of players for little moves. Not big moves, but definitely stuff that shuffled their roster around a little bit. And that is going to do it for this episode of the ESPN NFL 2K5 Franchise Dynasty with the Philadelphia Eagles. We got those Dallas Cowboys next week, a big division rivalry game. And I thank you for joining us on this video. That was our midseason check-in as well. Feel free to go back and check out all those stats and those trades that went down. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I do live stream these games as well, so feel free to pop in and through for a live stream. And we will look forward to seeing you on the next one. Peanuts 24-7, signing out.